This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Witt versus Toomer. You all have been together for about seven years, and Ms. Witt, you have petitioned this court for a polygraph examination. Tell us why you're here. Your Honor, I'm here because I believe he's cheating on me with my coworker. Ooh. Yes, and I'm devastated. I'm really just sad. I'm upset. I'm angry. I'm hurt. And if you find out he's cheating, knocking him to the curb, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Tuma, what do you have to prove today? I, I'm here to prove my innocence, and, uh, I mean, I try and convince her every day I love her. I'm not perfect, but I've never done anything that I can't, you know, be proud to admit here, so I'm... That's why I'm here, but... I can tell just the way you said that you got something going on inside you. Tell me how you feel about this situation. I mean, he just... He denies everything that I bring up, whether I find something in his phone, um, social media. I always see him talking to different girls, and he'll just say, oh, they're friends, it's not a big deal. It's just... It's disrespectful. We've been together for seven years. I want to grow with him. Yeah, you got some time in. Yes, exactly. But if you've had this much time in, it had to be a period where you didn't have these suspicions. Tell me what it was like when you all were enjoying each other and enjoying your relationship. Well, we met back our sophomore year of high school, and it was the best moment of my life. We um, were next to each other, got sat in each other in class, didn't even know each other. Um, he would always use a cheesy pickup line, or we <laughs> liked the same music, you know? So we kind of just... Everything that we liked that was the same, we kind of just, you know... Do you remember the cheesy line that got you? Kind of, yes. I think I remember as him saying something, do you know how much a polar bear weighs or something like that? And he's like, enough, <laughs> enough to break the ice. And he's like, hi, I'm Johnny Tuma. And I was like... <laughs> oh, <laughs> that... Wow! <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a good one. That's, that's, no. That's a good one. That's the most <laughs> creative one I've seen. And it Real worked. Bit. It worked. It honestly worked. I think you said something about stars in my eyes or something <laughs> cheesy like that. I can't re quite remember. Whatever it was, it worked. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any hoot. Whatever it was for them, it worked. Right. You were happy? Very happy, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so tell me what it was that made you bring out that much cheese. I saw her and I just was like immediately struck by her beauty. I felt like I was just... I had to say something. So I just decided to just say what I thought would make her smile. And even if she thought it was cheesy, I was just gonna say it, you know? Right. Uh, and that's why I fell for her even harder is because I could tell she's like, man, this guy's an idiot. And that's, ex <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted from that. I was like, I want her to see that this is just, you know, me, me messing around. It's just what I would do for a girl I really cared about, you know? She really gave me butterflies in my stomach and just... <sighs> Sappy, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, was he all in in the beginning? Yes, yes, Your Honor, he was. And there was actually this incident. We do this usually every time we go out. We go to, like, our favorite restaurant, and he'll literally take the straw, like, the paper straw off of the thing, and he'll, like, wrap it around my finger and say, one day this will be a big diamond ring, and I'll give you everything you want. I like what he does with the straws. Better He's... than what I do? Yes. No, mine is classic. <laughs> no, he takes the straw. And you know how you take the paper off and scoot it down and go... Yes. And bl he blows it across the table. I mean, he hits me in the shoulder. And I'm like, dude, what is that? And then I'll do the same because I'm mature that way. <laughs> and it really isn't a good look, Mr. Cullen. You can make me it's some It's a sound of affection. Is that what that is? Yeah, I'm look, I'm only blowing my straw at you. <laughs> <laughs> his bad behavior. Do not encourage his bad behavior. All right. So, yeah. So, the, the ring around the finger thing, I like that. That's... that's... Okay. So, but here's the thing. What went wrong? We went for paper rings, cheesy jokes. So, basically, a couple years ago, what happened was he cheated on me with my best friend's girlfriend. Let me make sure it's clear. Your best friend is a guy. Yes. And yes. this yes, guy's sir. girlfriend is who Mr. Tuma was with. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Yes. Um, so, I'm with my best friend, and we're out, and I asked him, I said, I really want to know what's going on. You know, I'm, I'm worried. I want to know if they had sex, if anything has happened. I've seen messages. And he said that he was over at his girlfriend's house the other night and saw messages that they were texting and talking basically about coming over and hanging out. And he said, I saw pictures, Brittany. I didn't believe him. I needed proof. So I said, you know, I'm going to take it upon myself and I will text her. So I texted her and she literally, woman to woman, was just like, Brittany, I'm sorry, but I slept with him. And she sent a picture of 
her sitting in the bed with him in the front where I sit exactly all the time. I'll be the first to say that that wasn't who I am today. And that's what I've been trying, that's why I'm here. I wanna make that right. And I've been trying to make it right since then. I felt like such a terrible person. And I saw her cry when she found out everything. And it was just so hard um, to mend that relationship back together, you know? I want that trust that we had before all that took place. But Ms. Witt, he's, he said he can't, you know, you are going through that. You've gotten to the other side of it. Mm -hmm. Why do you think he's cheating now? Because he's, it's just the same things. He's always very sketchy and, and... I need some specifics. Tell me what kind of sketchy things you So there you're was saying. an incident that happened. I set up a fake texting number, so to act like another girl. Um, it was a girl that we knew in high school, and I can actually show you. Okay, would like. right. you step to the monitor, please? So I was able to make this app and act as if I was her. And I have the messages to show, too. So you catfished your boyfriend? Yes, Your Honor. All right, go ahead and <laughs> tell me what you got. So basically, I just, you know, hit him up as if, as if I was her and, you know, asking, like, how are you, cutie? And he would started replying. And I was in the other bedroom. He was in the other room. And I'm doing this. He has no idea. And... Hold on, see, hold on. on. Yeah. He says... My girl works all day tomorrow, so that works for me. Yes. Now, you, now, you write him as this other woman and say, can't wait to look into your eyes and kiss you. And his response is, my girl works all day tomorrow, so that works for me. Yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately. <laughs> so I did that, went up to him, and he ended up just saying, you know, oh, I would have never done that. I knew that it was you the entire time. I did. Here. No, I he did. didn't, Your Honor. Okay. Let, no. me, let me let you go back to the podium. Your Honor, if I may, okay. I did know that that was her. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> stupid. She thinks she's the FBI, but she's not. If you knew it was her, why not hit her back with something like, that's a lovely invitation, but I would never do that because I'm so in love and so faithful to my girlfriend that I could not possibly even think of anything like that. Why not come back with something like that? I or, to... no, or, I know it's you, boo. <laughs> Psych. Yeah. And the, I mean, why would you even do that? Because I wanted to see how far she was willing to take it. I wanted to see... Well, now you see, because y'all sitting here. Y'all yeah. standing in front of me. <laughs> All right, Miss Witt, you brought this suit because you felt that he was cheating with your coworker. Yes, Your okay. Honor. Why do you think he's cheating with your coworker? Well, she just moved to Florida, where we live. Her and Johnny would kind of always be really close and, you know, just... I always thought there was... I didn't want to think there was something there. I didn't want to be the jealous type or feel insecure because we've gone through so many things. I, tr I wanted to try to give it, you know, a try. So, basically, what happened is I was out one day running errands, and I come home, and the house smells like profusely, um, a ton of perfume. There's contacts and a solution for the contacts sitting on the counter. So I start freaking out. I don't wear contacts. So I walk out, go to the bathroom, or go to the bedroom to go see him and see what's going on. And he starts denying and yelling at me, saying, oh, it's just probably one of your crazy girlfriends that left that behind. And we didn't even have anyone over for, like, the past two weeks, you know? I don't really even have anyone over that much. Okay, why would you think it was your co-worker's contacts? I mean, you come in and you see and Why would you presume that they were hers? Well, she texted him. She needed to pay... He told me that he had, she came over to pick up her, her work clothes that she left. Okay. And I didn't want to admit it at first that she had came over because I know how she is and I know that she would have assumed the worst and said, oh, you had this girl over. I don't care if she came over to pick up her work outfit. You guys were probably doing stuff together. So the, my look at it was just act like it never even happened. And when she no. left the contact... You should have been truthful. Okay. Well, uh, all right, so what is your relationship like with this coworker? At first, it was just really casual. She introduced me to her, and we, I just tried to be nice, and she was, had no friends in the area. She gradually got kind of, like, closer with me, and I could tell that Brittany very wasn't very comfortable with it. And that's why, like I said, I didn't really want to bring it up to Brittany because I knew how she would react if she had found out that she came over. Well, you know, we have his story, her story, and the co-worker story. 
Ron, I think we need to hear from the co-worker. Would you bring her in? Yes, Sean. Talk to the witness stand, please. Hello, Your Honor. How Hi. are you? Good day, how are you? I'm doing good. Good. All right. Would you state your name, please, for the court? Uh, Tierra Bezdek. Okay. And you are the co-worker in question? Yes. Okay. You work with Ms. Witt? Yes, I do. We just heard testimony about contacts being left at their home along with work clothes. Were those yours? Yes, they were. Okay. Why were your contacts and your work clothes left at their home? Well, a couple weeks ago, I had left my work uniform over there um, after we went out. Like, we would go to work and then we would go to the club after, like, we all go out together. Um, so I left my uniform over there. One day I was doing laundry and I was like, I should probably go over and grab it. Um, I wasn't there too long, you know, cooled off a little bit. I played with the dog um, and I used the bathroom to take my contacts out. So I had left them over there in the bathroom. Uh, so, but I didn't realize till I got back home, which was later. So um, I texted him again. I didn't know if she would be off work yet. And- Why um, couldn't you text me? I Why didn't you text my boyfriend? Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. Address okay. the court. Simple as that. Now, as a woman, how would you feel about your coworker, female coworker, coming over to your home? Well, honestly, um, I just feel like that's their own trust issues. I don't feel like that the blame should get put on me as if I were doing something wrong, because I didn't do anything wrong. Um, and maybe she has a reason to feel insecure about other women coming around him, but that's not my problem. I, I still had to get done what I needed to do on my own schedule, on my own time. So if it fit my schedule to go by the house and grab my things and she was at work, I mean... And to freshen but, yourself up. But you up. did more than just grab your things. You went there, you went in the bathroom, you freshened yourself up, you did... You play with the dog? Yeah, yeah I mean... But, <laughs> I mean... And I don't know, when you say I've play been... with the dog, I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's a dog or... <laughs> well, I mean, you. at least I didn't play with her man, so... Let me just give you a tip, because the next lady may not be like she is. Do not, for your safety, it ain't even about them, right. do that. Yeah. And if you are gonna do that, you better let her know, hey... Just check it in, need to pick up my whatever, whatever. Right. Is it okay if I drop by your house? Exactly. That's, right. that's respectful and courteous. <laughs> I... All right, so, Ms. Witt, you're not buying any of this. No, Your Honor. I no. understand. You're not buying it one bit. Not one bit. You believe he's cheating on you with your coworker? You claim you're not? We need to get to the bottom of this. And to get to the bottom of this, the court has ordered a polygraph examination of Mr. Toomer. At this time, the court will call a certified polygraph examiner, Mr. Patrick Coffey. Ron, please escort him in. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Coffey, how are you today? I'm doing great, sir. And you? We're doing well, thank you. You conducted a polygraph examination of Mr. Tuma, is that correct? Yes, sir, it is. Mr. Tuma was asked, have you had sexual intercourse with Ms. Witt's coworker, Ms. Bezdek? What was his response to that question? His response was no. What did the lie detector determine? The polygraph actually determined that uh, he was being truthful. Mr. Tuma was asked, other than the one time you admitted to in 2015, have you had sexual intercourse with any woman other than Miss Witt? What was his response? He responded no again. What did the lie detector determine? The polygraph determined that uh, he was being truthful. All right, now you can talk. You can say whatever you want to to her. Will you put a string on I feel on like my you finger? owe everybody in this room an apology for dragging <laughs> me out here. I did absolutely nothing wrong, and I love you, and I wanted you to trust me. That's all I want. That's why I'm here, like I said. Can I have a hug and a kiss? I love can we? You. <laughs> all 
All right, Mr. Tuma, I have to admit, when Judge Cutler said, okay, you can say anything to her that you want to say, I really thought you were going to say, look, I don't want to give you any reason whatsoever to think that I'm cheating on you. So I'm not going to be texting other women. Yes, sir. You know, even if I know it's you, I'm not going to be doing that. <laughs> that, I think, is what, what she happen? wants to hear. That's what she yes, needs sir. to hear for your relationship to move forward. And where do you want to see this go? I, I just want us to keep growing. I love you so much. I mean, it's ridiculous. And I'm happy you did this. And I just want to carry on and be old people together. <laughs> <laughs> you all are married, been together for nine years. But you, Mr. Ware, believe your wife is cheating and you have opened this case because of that belief. Tell us why you are here. Yes, Your Honor. I believe that my wife is cheating on me. Okay. I'm not cheating. Um, okay. Oh, we're gonna get to you. Let me hear what they gotta say. I have reasons to believe it. Um. Oh my goodness. Well, this is tearing you up. Yes, it is, Your Honor. Um, how are you feeling at this moment as you try to figure I'm out? I'm hurt. I'm how hurt, you here? Honor. Um, you know, um. My wife. She's very flirtatious. How does it feel to see your husband standing here it so hurt. overcome that he can't even get the words together? Okay, it hurt. Your Honor. He is in tears because he believes that you're cheating. You know, Your Honor, I wear my marriage on... Your Honor. I wear my Honor. marriage for pride. I oh. rocks my marriage. Okay. I rocks my marriage. Okay. I don't let no man come. If it ain't Jesus, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it because I'm not going to hell. No, nah, that's how I feel. I'm not going to burn a hell for no one. I got married because I love my husband, but I also got married because I did not want to suffer. All right. In yeah. sin. That's why I got married. You, here's my question. Have you ever cheated on your husband in no. the past? So I you have no never reason. cheated. He gives me everything. So he... you don't say, you say, I don't even have a reason to cheat. Yana. No. Yana. Okay. Mr. Yeah. Ware. She have. Yana, um, I got a phone call from my mother. Um, she was diagnosed with throat cancer. Um, oh. Belated. I went to go be by my mom's side, and in the process of me being by my mom's side, I get a phone call saying my wife is out hanging. Oh, she was in a club running, running streets uh, with Tom, Dick, and Harry. Um, she, she started a new life. Oh, you know, Jehovah, you got to understand Jehovah. this. Miss Ware, were you in the clubs while he was out taking care of a sick Yes, mother? I was. I'm not going to tell you, and I'm going to be real, yes, I was, but see, your honor, he's not telling the whole truth. If you're going to tell it, you tell it right. You know, he called me, uh -huh. and he was like, baby, I love you, but I ain't never coming home. He's then not telling you sleeping what he with different doing. men then? No. Well, that's a lie. All right, right. you don't believe that's that at all, Mr. Ware. I got Ware. calls telling, telling me that my wife was cheating. I, I researched it. Oh, you know, Jehovah, you got to understand Jehovah. this. I called the voicemail. It, it, I got men calling my house around 3, 4 o'clock in the morning around booty call person. hours. You understand that? Yeah, it I was understand booty call hours. So, and I never had sex with him. And he was not my type. I gave him my phone number, and then when we got to talk, I was like, no, I'm not doing this. Well, you if know, he wasn't your type, why'd you give me your phone number? I was drunk. <laughs> right. Mr. Ware, clearly this marriage is in trouble. What was it like in the beginning? I gave her something that I never gave no other woman. You know, my heart. My whole wow. heart. And she walked into my life like a princess, you know? And I wanted to be the prince, you know? And uh, along the way, we, we tied that knot and we became king and queen. And I thank God that I did run across her because, hey, I wouldn't be the man I am standing in front of you today if it wasn't for But me. he changed me, too. He have. He changed me. That's why I say I rocks my husband because he have changed me. He didn't change me for the worse. He changed me for the better. Well, good grief. Y'all done got together. Y'all king and queen. <laughs> yeah. Look at this, the, the wedding picture. Them. Look at this beautiful wedding picture. Y'all changed each other for the better. Why in the dress. world are you in... <laughs> Well, Yana, you know, I just, okay. you know, I, me personally, I need to know that I'm not putting my life on, on you know what I'm saying, and putting all my eggs in one batch and it's not worth it. And so, Mr. Ware, why do you think she's cheating? Well, Yana, you know, um, I picked up a second job. I was in the process of going into the freezer area. And I noticed, you know, 
just hypothetically, you know, a group of guys standing over there, you know, laughing and joking, you know, when I walk away. But as I come back around, they hush, hush, and everybody act like they, they re seriously at work. So I go back the next time to go to the cooler. I hear the same noise that my wife makes doing climax. You know, oh, Lord Jesus, shoot. Oh, Lord Jesus, shoot. You know, and it's so just you a have these guys it's, saying this? Yes, Your Honor. It's just a coincidence. Oh, you know, Jehovah, you got to understand Jehovah. this. It's a coincidence. During our intimate time, you can the, just hyperly come off the top of your head and just say this. Okay, so. And laugh and joke and, you know, watch so when you, and, 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 and So you see, you hear these guys and they're saying, yes. oh, Lord Jesus, what? Yes. Oh, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, shoot. Yeah. Oh, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, shoot. shoot. And you as know. you're hearing this, you're like, that sounds familiar, Ooh, and it clicks to you it, that right. this is what she says when you all are Ooh, making Jehovah, love Jehovah, Jehovah. at the point of climax. Yes, Your Honor. Ooh, you know, Jehovah, you gotta Jehovah, understand Jehovah. this. I don't deal with these people. Ooh, they don't know nothing Jehovah, of me. They don't stay next door to me. They don't stay around the corner from me. You know. So the but, only way they can know that. It's a coincidence. What? Well, they just walking past someone. Oh wow. Ooh, Jehovah, then Jehovah. they're working at the same place with me, right? So the only way they can know that Ooh, is if oh. one of them has been with her. Right. And you think they're making that Ooh, noise Jehovah. to let you know they've been with her. <laughs> Jehovah! 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 Miss Ware. He, he wrong. Miss Ware. He wrong. Miss Ware. <laughs> he wrong. Miss Ware, do you say, oh, Lord, yes. Jesus, shoot? Yes, he did! <laughs> <laughs> he, <laughs> but it's a cold So you do say that. Yes, no, they at work saying the same thing. Hold on, listen, right. listen. Y'all gotta listen. Okay, so you do say that. Yes! And so there's no way these guys would know that unless you've been with them. He's over exaggerating. I think that. A coincidence, he, right? Yeah. Okay, because I gotta tell you, oh Lord Jesus, shoot is not common. If you keep hearing Amen. that, thank you. And so thank the you. fact that they would thank say you. that in front of your thank husband. You. Every job he go to, I sleep with somebody at that job. Every job. Then I give him an excuse to leave one job to another job to another job to another job. Are you admitting that you're sleeping with all no. these people? No. You're saying he's accusing you yes, of that. Yes, he's accusing so me. So every job he, he goes to, he says you done slept with somebody yes. on that job. Yes. Mr. Ware, you're not doing that, are you? Yes, he is. Your, Your Honor, you know, I love her, but do I believe that she's the woman that, that I, I fell in love with? No, I do not. Have you seen anything else that make you think that your wife is cheating? I, I came home from work. I knock on the door. You know, we only have one set of keys. It takes us seven minutes. That's a lot. To come to the door. But when I walk, walk, walk up in the house, I notice in the, in the tub is our bed sheets. If, 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 if the sheets was just tossed up in there, it's still dry. You know, it's not soaking wet all the way through. This is what she was doing in the process of me knocking at the door. Then I get in the room, the bedroom window's open. It's January in Chicago. And the window's Wait open. Wait a moment. Okay. For real. Okay. Okay. So you know, did you... I go take the garbage out, and the process of me taking out the garbage, I look down beside the window, I see footprints. That's a lot like, 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 like a person, you know, say, scooted out the, out the window. And you know, jumped out. Finger, fingerprints off the, up on, on the windowsill. Not the our window see, he, This is fresh snow, Yon. That's a lie. Right. These footprints are deep right here, and then they, they lighten up going towards the back. Okay, right. Miss Ware. He's lying. The man is lying. So tell us what happened. I got up, cleaned myself up, and I threw the sheets in the tub because we didn't have a washer and dryer. Threw the sheets in the tub with bleach, and I changed the sheets. I tried showing him that where I had bleach in the tub. And then I had lit a candle on the candle. They caught on fire. Okay. But why was the window open? Because I was letting the smoke out because the smoke alarm came on. But why were there fingerprints on the ledge? He and didn't tell there? you that. How can they? I scream is um the scream is like because the scream was already bubbled, but my landlord came and screwed it down. So there's no way for there's you no to get way. out. There's no way. So you deny that you had a man in your house oh, when he came I home that evening? I don't cheat on my husband. I think we have okay. enough evidence, Mr. Cutler. Okay. Mr. Ware, you believe your wife has been unfaithful to you because you've heard some of your coworkers mockingly use the very same phrases she uses when you all are making love and she climaxes. Yes. You came home, you didn't have a key, and it took her seven minutes to open the door. Yes. And because of that, you believe that your wife is cheating with other men. Yes, Your Honor. 
Because of this, this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call licensed private investigator Eric Eccles to determine, is she cheating? <laughs> Good day, Mr. Eccles. How are you? Fine, Your Honors. How are you doing today? Doing well. It's good. good to see you. Tell us what you and your team did to investigate this case. Well, Your Honor, I had a very built and well put together associate of mine go undercover and pose as a man who was coming to court because he too was accused of cheating. He was placed in a room with Ms. Ware and a hidden camera to see if she would take his bait. So what did your associate find out? Everything seemed pretty calm at first until a court staff came in and asked my associate to change his shirt before he took his polygraph test. Oh. What happened after he removed the shirt? Well, uh, Ms. Ware got pretty heated at first and did everything in her power to keep it together, and we also brought that tape. <laughs> oh, I see you're fanning. Your test already? Huh? No, I'm gonna take it. Too good. Too. Mr. Ware, what do you think as you're watching I'll just, I'll just say my wife is selfish. If I was to touch a woman, there's a problem. A coworker can't even say nothing to me. So I go there and put some... Uh, you would, you some, would've shut your eyes. Some babe lotion on her because she wants to... I didn't put no lotion. lotion. All I did I'm was roll up his sleeve. Right. He said it hurt it right up in here, so I rolled the part up and I was like, okay, you can pull this up too, and it will help. And that's the only it. thing I did. I didn't sleep with him. I didn't do yeah, nothing. I and only, when I said he was going to make Derek look small, I was talking about his muscle. I was to shave my now, head, y'all. Ms. Ware, let me I ask you this. I can't the back of my head. Ms. Ware, let me ask you this. You see, if the situation were reversed, you know if, there were a, upset. if there were a woman who had on a halter top and, you know, some Daisy Dukes, upset. and he acted the saying. same way you acted, I'd probably be upset. You'd be upset, right. wouldn't you? And I know I heard you say that. For real, though, right? But he was sexy, though. I know, I know. You are like I would have jumped in the bed with him. One of the did. interesting things about that is I heard you go, Lord Jesus. Hmm. Hey, there so you go. That's you... the same thing that yeah. she always says. So that does right. corroborate. Huh. It's coincident, ain't it? To further investigate this, we ordered Miss Ware to take a polygraph exam. We'd like to call certified polygraph examiner Tommy Platt into the courtroom. Ron, would you escort him in? Tommy Platt. <laughs> Mr. Platt, how are you? Good, Your Honors. You performed a polygraph examination of Ms. Ware, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. Ms. Ware was asked, have you ever had physical sexual contact with anyone from your husband's job? What was her response? She stated no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that... The lie detector determined that she was being truthful. We still have one more question. I know, but I believe in Jesus, and Jesus know my heart. Hello. Mrs. Ware was asked, during your marriage, have you had sexual intercourse with Ooh, anyone Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. other than your husband? What was her response to that question? She stated no. What did the polygraph determine? The polygraph determined that she was telling the truth. Mr. Ware? Your Honor, you know, um, I can be a man enough to say, well, sorry, I apologize, you know, but I also got to make it up to you, okay? 
I told him I want some things. I told him if I pass this, I want some things. I want that diamond ring, and I want a new car. All right, well, Miss Ware, and I'm gonna talk to you, woman to woman. Yes, ma'am. When you have a big personality. You have to be careful with your husband if he's the quiet type because you can stomp all over him and not even see it. When we turned to him, what he said was, I'm sorry. I'm willing to do some things to let you know I love you and appreciate you. But I love you. my husband, Your Honor. I, I, I know, but here's the thing. Your response was, I will up, up, up. And so I would <laughs> encourage you to be a little more gracious toward him as you forgive him for the accusations he made. And Mr. Ware... You know, you got yourself a handful right here. <laughs> you got yourself a beautiful, loving handful. <laughs> and she didn't just turn that way overnight. You knew she was like that when you got with her, which is what you love about her. So you've got to allow her the space to be herself without being so suspicious. You walking out with your queen. That's what you want. That's right. Right. And that's all I ever want to be yeah. treated like. I'm not a hoe. Come here. All right. I'm not a hoe. I'm a woman. You all have been together for two years. You're engaged. And, Ms. Robinson, you've opened this case specifically because you believe your fiancé is sleeping with his ex. <laughs> is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I believe he's still sleeping with his ex. He sees her behind my back. Uh, they just communicate no. all the time. I just don't see no reason for it. I think I'm enough woman for three women, so I don't think he have a reason. <laughs> to talk to any woman. It ain't just ain't her. It's, it's multiple women. It's every time we yeah, get into it, he's always women. in a different woman phase. They always around. So I just want to get to the bottom of it before we get married. I just can't accept it. And we're not... The wedding's off is she. So you done. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and what did she say? Cause she more than know. She three women. Yeah. I, he can't handle this. All right. He don't need nothing else. I, I don't like it. And if you find out that he's cheating with his ex, then what? Oh, it's over. It's a history. Cause I believe that's where his heart is anyway. Mm. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sanford, she didn't put it all out there. Yeah. Are you sleeping with your ex? No. Me and my me and my ex got a mutual agreement. But I love my wife, my woman. Well, I call her my wife, but she's my fiance. But I'm in love with this woman, and this is what I'm here to prove today. I don't want my ex. But Mr. Sanford, Miss Robinson said something very key. It was one sentence. She went through it real fast, but I caught it. She said, "I believe his heart is still with the ex." Mm -hmm. No, that's important because I, the look, heart, that at the center of the like relationship, this. that's what it is. Right. The heart. So right. is your heart with no. your ex? No. I have love for her, but I can't be dogging her out, and I don't want her running around here dogging me out at the same time. I, we can't have our kids seeing, seeing us arguing and stuff 24-7. But why we can't come together and talk about this? But you think and let it's me more, know what's going on you when think you it's more than argue that. with me and go see your baby mom. So you think it's more than just keeping a, a, a relationship with the kids? You think it's more than that? I don't... I think that he still love, got love for her because of the history and the kids. And I think she just got love for him, too, because she knows she... You know, she messed up. I think he's still in love. You can't love two people at one time. Okay, All right. Mr. Sanford, you say you're not in love with your ex. Right. Miss Robinson has used this phrase twice now. She says she believes your heart is with her. So it must be something that you're doing that's causing her to believe that your heart is with her. When they... These two contact each other, Facebook and stuff, I then when they her. get into oh, it, no. then when they get into it, they want to bring me in it. Mm -hmm. And this is why she feel like that, because I tell her, don't come to me with it. Don't tell me about it or nothing. But you understand, she believes it's not just you just have this relationship to co-parent. She believes that you're still having sex with her. No, I'm not... We don't hang out or nothing like that. You're saying if none I of see, that is going on. Go over there... She brings his the hair. Yeah, she do bring my hair. She and, goes over there and uh, sit in between this girl's leg or in between her, her hands and get your hair braided and you did not pay her. I don't even go so to her house to get morning, my hair braided. So, she's mentioning him on Facebook. Tom, um, I'm like, who is that? He was like, oh, that's Whitley. And uh, she's climbing on me because I did not pay her. But, Ms. Robinson, his hair. You, you probably can't tell it from looking at me, but I know a thing or two about hair braiding. <laughs> when you get your hair braided, you typically sit on the floor, somebody sits in a chair, and you are, I guess, technically between yeah, their between legs. legs. That's what I'm thinking. You but know? he's getting his hair... That's how people get their hair braided, yeah. right? Yeah. I sit in a chair. Wait a minute. Up. Hold up, y'all. I gotta get some information <laughs> from him. <laughs> how do you know? <laughs> how do you know about hair braiding? <laughs> You were breaks. Look, I bet you the movies, I read books, I read magazines, I got friends, I got people. I know things. You know things. I know things. So you just know this. I know this. Okay. We we get the uh the hair break. 
But this ain't gonna call all this that we watch it. It's gotta yeah. be more to it than this. I have what? another example. Mm -hmm. All right, talk all right. to me. We um had, had to evacuate from North Carolina because of the hurricane. Okay. Uh, we wound up he wound up getting a hotel for two weeks. I only stayed there a week. He put me out. He put you out. He put, yeah. he put me out. You're not gonna argue and yell with me and cause a scene in the hotel because you're gonna get both of us put out. So you leave. Mm hmm. But when we got back together, I'll go through his phone again. It's messing this for, um, from Whitley saying, what, uh, what, what number is it? What, you ain't got a phone, so a phone number. What number? What number is she talking about? You think she wouldn't stay with him that week? Yeah. So you think they were laid up together in that hotel? I surely do. All right. Uh -huh. Mr. So, Sam. Not true. <laughs> but, I mean, what was uh, this argument? Do you think he just made this argument up so Because that... I wanted some eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I was hungry. <laughs> well, you know... I like to eat. You know, beloved, there's her side, the fiancé side, and the ex's side. And she is here. Rob, wow. here is her in. Yes, sir. All right. How are you? Um, I could be better. All right. Would you please state your full name for the record? My name is Whitley Denise Williams. All right. Miss Williams, you don't look happy. I'm very angry. All right. What is the nature of your relationship with Mr. Sanford? Me and Mr. Sanford started talking to each other back in 20, 2004. And uh, we was together for 10 years. And um, in the process, I was later on introduced to Miss Doris as a family friend. How did you find out that they were together? Well, when Mr. Sanford first came back to the town we we're in, he hit me up. Okay. When he hit me up, he told me he had just left a relationship and that he wasn't going with anybody. I asked him. Which was true. Several oh. days later, I see that Doris' name pops up on Messenger and is calling him while he's visiting with me. He told me he don't go with her. Then I look on my Messenger and I receive a message from her telling me, basically, don't mess with him. If I mess with him, she gonna tell the dude I'm going with. Yeah. And I have evidence of it. So okay. you were in a relationship first. Yes, yes I was, was with Mr. Sanford when I got first. Back. While you were still in a relationship with Mr. Sanford, you were also friends with her. Yes, I would bring my kids by. She would help me watch them if I needed to make a run. Yes, we were friends, for real. All right, well, let's look at this. Okay, I just want to make sure we had that, that correct. It says, is you still talking to Lee? If you are, you better stop. Why you didn't keep him when you had him? Stay away from Lee. We together now, and you be disrespectful. You all ain't got blank to talk about point blank period. You didn't want him when you had him. So this is the message you received from Ms. Robinson. Mm -hmm. And is this how you found out that they were together? Yep. Because he Mr. Denied Sanford denied it. He still it. denies it. I to me. Still deny it. To okay. me. Do you understand that they're engaged to be married? I had no idea to... I just found out 10 minutes ago. Oh. Mr. Sanford. Yes, ma'am. Now, you didn't sit here and say you trying to have this good relationship with her and yeah. about the kids. She said y'all best friends. Right. And you don't tell your best friend, the mother of your three kids, hey, by the way, I'm getting married to this other woman. No, because I did... When I tell her that, when I tell her that, that same kind of message you just seen on that screen, that's what I'm gonna have to deal with for about two weeks straight. Okay, I'm during it, hold on. Hold on. Do you believe that he wants you back? Yes, I do, for numerous reasons. Okay, tell... I was gonna say, tell me why. Because every time we together, he always bring up the fact he missed me, he say he loved me, and I don't think he just mean I love you as a person. I think deep down he's still in love with me. And he, long story short, told me the last time we talked, the only reason why he's talking to Doris is the fact that I'm getting engaged. <laughs> Otherwise, if I was still single, he would still want to be with me. Have you all been having sex over this last two years? Me and Mr. Sanford had said sex once. And this is before I knew anything about Doris. 
So once you found out about her, you I have... was done. It was over with because of the betrayal. I found out from Mr. Sanford six months after I had our last child that Doris was asking him to take her bra off for her, that she was asking him to wash her back, that she was walking around naked. All this stuff I found out six months after I had our last child. So that's what made that's the lie. relationship between yeah. me and Doris that is a lie. <laughs> that is okay, a lie. Okay, Robinson, wait a minute. You all have been together for two years, right? Yeah. Correct? Yeah. All right, and you're saying within the last two years, you and Mr. Sanford have been intimate together? Once. One time? Right. One time. Before we got serious. Before I knew, I swear. How long ago was that? Probably the second day after he got in town, maybe. So, uh, how How long ago? ago? A year ago? A year and a half ago. This is is the first time I ever heard that. And I think that she just also get back stuff, too, because we all was friends. Okay. Uh, Do you think he's cheating? Yes, I do, for a lot of reasons. Okay, tell me about that. Well, the last time I also talked to Mr. Sanford while I was braiding his hair, he mentioned me a conversation that him, Doris, and another female that he says is his homegirl had. What happened, what he told me was, he was sitting there with the homegirl, and Doris called. When Doris called, he intentionally told the girl to answer the phone. He let both of them basically go back and forth over him, and when they got done, he said, I don't go with you. I don't go with you, so I don't understand why y'all arguing over me. That's a lie. They, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's that's a lie. What so, Miss Robinson, me. did you know about this homegirl? <laughs> yeah, I knew about the girl. We had got into it or whatever, so we separated. He was at his dad's house, and I'm at home. A day before his birthday, you know, we wound up mm-hmm. getting together or whatever one night. We did our thing or whatever, so when he fell asleep, I took a picture of him naked. Yeah. After I got through his phone, I took a picture of him naked and sent it to her from my phone. Sent it to who? To that girl. The homegirl. His friend. Okay. Why? Huh. I was just being petty and out of anger, just being petty. And what did you say when you said this? I said, I'm sitting having sex with him. Okay, you submitted this to I the court. I didn't say it like that, but you know. <laughs> okay, you submitted that text that you took a picture of, and it says, I'm blanketing. And the other woman responds, I don't give a blank. Grow the blank up, you big sloppy blank. I have blanked him too. Just blanked him before you start blowing him up. <laughs> Mrs. I mean, Ro- Ms. Robinson said, me and dude supposed to be in a whole relationship. And she responds, girl, stop. He don't want you. <laughs> so this is the interchange after you sent the naked picture of Mr. Sam. Mm-hmm. Mr. Sanford, you got women all over the place. That's he what does. I'm saying. He... But I just met the girl. I helped the girl get a car off the road. Did you tell your fiance, hey, I, you won't believe what happened today. I saw this lady, she had car problems, I helped her. Did you tell her that? No, I, I didn't. Did you say, I'm going to visit my home girl? No, not before I went. Mm. Okay. I think we've heard enough. I know I have. T- t- tell me what we got. <laughs> we have Miss Robinson believes that her fiancé is still in love with his ex mm-hmm. and believes his heart is with her. That's the mm-hmm. word she used. She also believes Mr. Sanford is having a sexual relationship with his ex. And then the final thing is there's some other woman out here and she's saying to you in text messages she's, she's having sex with, with him. Yeah. And for all these reasons, you believe that Mr. Sanford is cheating. All he can say is, I'm not in it, I don't want to be in it. And, Ms. Robinson, you have said if it comes out that Mr. Sanford is, in fact, cheating, you are done. Let us off. What what, what we gonna get married for? Okay. Because you're gonna be cheating the whole time. All right. (laughs) Mr. Cutler? At this time, the court will call former military interrogator Lena Sisko and certified polygraph examiner Tommy Platt to determine, is he cheating? (laughs) Mr. Cisco, Mr. Platt, good day. How are you all? Good. We've got a lot going on here. We need your help. Ms. Cisco, you are a former military interrogator, correct? Yes, Your Honor. You conducted an interrogation in this case, correct? I did, Your Honor. Okay. What did you determine about Mr. Sanford's dealings with the person that Ms. Robinson sent a naked picture to. So when I asked Mr. Sanford about this person who he refers to as his homegirl, he only admitted that she was trying to seduce him. So when they were together, she would wear skimpy clothes and she would rub up on him and rub her booty on him. I asked him multiple times if he had sexual intercourse with this woman, and he said no both times. The first time he told me no, however, he leaked Duper's Delight right after he said it. So that's that little smile that comes across the face, which is an indicator of deception. 
So I don't believe he's being 100% honest with me, and there is something there that he is hiding. His mouth is saying one thing, his body is saying something else. Exactly. All right. Now, Mr. Platt, you conducted a polygraph examination of Mr. Sanford, correct? Yes, sir. You asked Mr. Sanford, have you had sexual intercourse with the woman to whom Ms. Robinson sent the naked picture of you? What was his response to that question? Your Honor, he stated no. What did the polygraph determine? The polygraph determined that he was being deceptive. <laughs> Mr. Sanford, this homegirl, how many times have you been with her? I never slept with her. I never did nothing with that girl. The issue is, and this is, an, and this is I'm directing to you, the lie detector says he was deceptive, that he, in fact, had sexual intercourse with this homegirl. What are you thinking? I'm looking at your face. I can't read it. I know it's anything but happy. What are you thinking? Uh, yeah, I'm very upset. I'm very angry. I'm just, like, we're, we're definitely not getting married. So that's... Marriage is out. <laughs> no. Okay. So, Mr. Sanford, I mean, it sounds like neither one of you is ready to get married. She's not ready to get married because of your behavior, and you definitely are not ready to get married because of your behavior. So you need to figure out what you want to do. Do you want to be a man that someone wants to marry? Do you want to be that man? If you don't, that's fine. If you want to go out and play the field, if you want to help every damsel in distress that you meet on the side of the road and fix their car, that's fine. If you want to do that, but just be upfront about it and tell Ms. Robinson that's what you want to do.